Hi guys, welcome back to Scott Family Homestead. It is sunny and it is hot. And for September, that's really rare in Wisconsin, but we are taking advantage of it. What I'm going to do today is actually go into the barn and do some work. It's nice and cool in there. And we're gonna work on a project that I talked about in a recent video. If you watched my dairy barn video, we talked about this field stone and how it is wearing out in a lot of areas and needs to be repointed. So I want to talk a little bit about what pointing is, uh, why we do it, how we're going to do it, what materials we chose to use, um, and all the details from there. And then I'll show you the main problem area that we have that we're going to be working on inside. Pointing is putting the mortar into all of the cracks and holes between your stone or bricks that make up the structure of your building. Um, in our case, we are repointing because we're doing this um, to refresh our mortar. And so this spot you can see somebody actually did. I'm not sure when this was redone. Uh, it's right next to the door, which can kind of be a weak point. And you can tell, you can tell somebody came through here and redid a lot of this. Um, we also have some parts uh, where it's bulging a little bit with the stones. We have a little bit of sloppier work that has been done here that is now beginning to crack. So a lot of this side of the barn has been redone. I'm going to show you the inside of the barn where a lot of work hasn't been done and it is in desperate need. Our barn is an old dairy barn here in Wisconsin and it was built in the late 1800s. You can see a lot of this has been patched over the years. After over a hundred years of this barn standing, there have been a lot of issues. Your mortar is generally not gonna last more than a hundred years. If you're dealing with a structure like this that's over a hundred years old, you likely have areas that need to be fixed. This back wall here is our main problem area. Um, we have a lot of holes and cracks and spots that need to just be replaced. We also have stones that have fallen and we have to patch all of that up and fill in these holes. This is our main doorway upstairs and you can see it's supported by these beams and is very solid in here. But this wall is weakening as the mortar has broken down over time. So just to show you a little bit more close up, this all looks to be original mortar and it is just missing in parts. Uh, there's small stones in here and then there's a lot of stones that uh, belong in there that are now on the ground as this mortar has disintegrated over time. One of the issues we're gonna have is that this old mortar needs to be removed um, as much as possible, especially the loose stuff, before we can start patching in on these areas. Now a lot of you suggested doing lime mortar and you suggested three channels to me to check out. Uh, most of them are in Europe and they are repointing old stone structures and I watched a lot of those videos. I really enjoyed them and also learned a lot. And so back when they did these structures, basically before the 1920s, 1930s, all of the mortar was done with a lime mortar. Now we more often use a cement mortar. But after researching it, there really is benefit to the lime mortar, especially because that's what was originally intended for these older buildings. So we have decided to go with the lime mortar, and we'll talk more about that when we mix it up and get all of that ready. Um, but the benefits of the lime is that it's a little bit softer, which allows this wall to breathe, and the lime mortar will absorb water so that it doesn't get stuck in the stones. Now, I have not done this before. I have not done barn work to this extent before, uh, so I can't say with certainty how it's gonna go, but I do hope to update a year from now or so, or maybe in the spring, and just let you know how it went. Our issue right now, this wall, partially because of the holes up here and partially because of the drainage outside, which I mentioned in my last video, um, or maybe I should say lack of drainage, this turns into a water feature. 
this is a wall that just seeps water. In the wintertime, it is icicles. And in the spring, it is water and it fills the bottom of our barn with water as the snow melts outside. So the very first thing that you have to do before you even consider doing all of this repointing work is to take care of any exterior problems. So we fixed our gutter, which was clogged up up there, and that was leaking down, causing the washout area. Uh, we are going to regrade that area, add drainage as necessary. And then in the springtime, when the snow starts to melt, we don't have it all coming in this way. So we have to fix that first priority. Um, but I'm actually going to start, I'm actually going to start the mortar first. And that is because with the lime mortar, it needs to stay humid and moist for a couple of weeks. In order for that to happen, it needs to not be freezing. And we are at a nice warm pocket of September right now. And I have a couple of weeks of really nice weather ahead. Um, but beyond that, it could start to freeze at night. And so time is ticking to get this done uh, really as quickly as possible, get as much of it done as we can while the weather allows. And we won't be able to do everything that we want to do. We will not get everything done. But uh, once, once the weather starts to shift, then we'll work on the outdoor stuff and get the drainage stuff taken care of. But it should all be taken care of before we have the major water issues again. Where I have these big holes, I have large stones. I will not portray myself as an expert here. I have done a lot of research on this. I've read some great blogs. In fact, I will link some um, and watch some great videos about this. But this is a first for me, and I hope you follow along to see how it all turns out. There's a lot of work to do in here, so this, this portion of the wall is number one for me because this is where water is seeping in. Um, but we have areas, especially around all of our windows and doors, where it is crumbling. Um, you can just see how much sand and mortar and stones are on the ground in this barn. So this is a important step to take, but this is a multi-year project to get this all done. Um, a lot of the patchwork that's been done is cement, from what I can tell. Um, and any, anything that's in decent shape or has been redone and is hanging in there, I'm going to leave alone. I am not going to dig out all that cement mortar in order to patch it with lime. We are just going to do patch fixes as needed so that this barn doesn't disintegrate over time. So this thing is probably somewhere in the range of 130 to 150 years old, and it deserves, it deserves to stay standing. Um, I will also link my original barn tour video. You can see things have come a long way with cleaning this thing out. I'm so proud of that. We have made huge, huge progress on the barn clean out. Uh, but in that video, we also show the roof, which thankfully is metal and has saved this barn. Now it's just time to deal with the foundation. While we are in here, let's take a peek at the piglets. They are doing so good. They grow so fast. And Mama is so patient. Look at that one just crawling on her back. You can see around this window, I mean, just a total lack of any mortar. So that one is definitely high up on the list as well. Anytime you have a spot like that where it's around a door frame or a window, you already have a weak spot because of that hole. Um, and it starts to deteriorate around that quickly. And if you don't repair it, that's when you start to get stuff that caves in or falls down. And it happens to a lot of barns. And once you get to that point, you need somebody to come in and fully rebuild the wall. And so that's what we're trying to avoid. We don't want to end up with a corner or a door frame or a window area caving in on us and becoming a project that we cannot handle on our own. The repointing part, we can definitely do. Before I go mixing up any mortar, we have to pick a patch that we're going to work on. I'm gonna do maybe a three foot by two foot section at a time. And I've got some wire brushes and some other brushes and we're going to work on getting all of this mortar out the best we can. 
a lot of this area just simply doesn't have mortar anymore so it shouldn't be too hard but we just want to brush it so that it's not gritty and dry then we're going to spray down this wall with a pressure sprayer and get everything wet that's the condition you want the wall in when you start repointing you want it to be nice and moist um, and then we will mix up our mortar and get working on this in small sections I don't know how much we will be able to get done in the next week or so, which is about how much time we have to do this because we have so many other things going on at the farm, but we're just going to do the best we can and hopefully not have the water issue next year. On the plus side, water has been pouring in here for several years and nothing has caved in yet. So I think we're okay if we don't finish the whole thing this fall. So I'm gonna go get the tools. I bought about 300 pounds of um, masonry sand and a whole bunch of lime. So that should get us pretty far. And then I also bought all the tools to do this, um, like all the repointing tools, brushes, wire brushes, some buckets for mixing and a mixing attachment for my drill. And everything came to $175. I think that's a pretty reasonable price for the materials and tools, most of which is reusable. So we're gonna go ahead and bring some of those brushes down here and get working on this wall. It's really turning out to be in worse shape than I thought, so this is going to get complicated. What I'm dealing with is basically everything above this beam is missing all the stone. That's all the stuff that's on the ground. Um, and that we that we can deal with. But as we go down the wall, we've got mortar and as I'm brushing it away, stones are falling out. Um, pretty large stones. So it's just in a little bit worse condition than I was originally hoping. I'm just gonna keep going and brushing as much as I can. This mortar is just falling apart and raining down. Um, so we really have to prioritize what section we want to start on. My thought is since right here starts the foundation that does go all the way up to the top of the barn, um, I kind of want to do this little section in here build it up and patch what we can um, and then do a stripe down and then work our way over because if i keep if i keep removing all of this mortar and stones are falling out we're gonna have this wall collapsing so i'm gonna pick an area probably from about this stone to this one over here where I run into this. Yeah. I don't know, maybe I should just repoint like from here down and like not mess with that. This is way harder than I thought. I was like going into this very naive. Okay, so this part of the wall is just crumbling. Um, the mortar is sand. It's not even something that can really be chiseled out. The more you brush it, the more it comes out. So what we've decided is to start with a chunk right here. We've cleared the mortar out best we can. Um, we're gonna work on that before we build up the top. We're gonna do this, go all the way down to the bottom, and then we can build up the top. And we're just gonna do two foot sections, bit by bit by bit. This is the worst part, probably on this side of the beam and then directly on the other side. So if all we get is a four foot stretch done, that's at least gonna help for this winter and the coming spring. So that is my goal right now. It is extremely extensive compared to what I was expecting. I went into this very naive and thought I would just come in here and <laughs> mortar this up. I have done some mortaring in stonework uh, where you pipe it in and smooth it out and that was kind of a fun, enjoyable job. We did it behind our fireplace um, in our previous home. Uh, turns out this is gonna be way more extensive and a lot more on the line, <laughs> like a little riskier. So we're gonna do this 
bit by bit and I'm going to show you as we go. This is how I've got it right now. There's still some dustiness, but we've brushed it all the best we can. Um, this we have not done, so we will have to come over here and do this next. So right now we're doing basically from this hole around these stones, these bigger spots are going to get rocks put in them. Um, this spot we've hit solid there. And I don't want to dig too deep. Uh, we dug really deep right here and cleared all that out. That's going to need stones put in there as well, some smaller ones. Um, and then we can do the mortar here. So it's a small section right here that is ready. And once we solidify this wall, then we can start dealing with that disaster up there. This is probably why it costs like 10 grand to have somebody come in and do this. So we've decided to do a one part lime to two and a half part sand mixture. And what I'm gonna do, uh, because you want this to be pretty dry, what we're gonna do, we want the lime and the sand mixed really evenly. So I'm going to take one of my wagons and we're gonna mix up a big batch of the lime and the sand. And then from that point, we'll take smaller batches of that pre-mix into a bucket and add a little water at a time and mix it up. And so we can do smaller batches. So that's our plan as of now. It seems lately that whatever I post, I'm getting a ton of criticism. I fully expect that on this project. I guess what I want to say is there are people all over Wisconsin letting their barns fall down because they do not know what to do. They don't know how to care for it. Uh, it's not something you can just hire somebody to come in and do. Uh, a lot of people don't know how to deal with these old field stone barns and they are falling down. And so I feel like we have to make a step in the right direction using all the information that we can find available to us. Uh, we don't have all the people and resources to help and so we're doing our best. I am completely open to suggestions, information, resources, all the things, but please do it kindly because we're only just trying to do our best and what's right for this barn and what's right for this property to really honor it. That's my little disclaimer. This is not a um, how-to from an expert. This is a how we're doing it and maybe you want to try too. And I will give the resources that I've used to make these choices in the comments. I obviously will not have this barn done by the time this video posts, so if you've got some advice or something to make this easier on me, drop it in the comments because I'd love to hear it. Also add to that disclaimer that everybody you ask how to do this, they have a different suggestion. They have a different lime to sand ratio mix. Some people prefer cement, some the lime, and from what I can find online, Everybody does it a little bit differently. You're getting a thousand different opinions on it. And so while I do appreciate the suggestions, I also have to keep that in mind when deciding what to do here. This is my bucket of lime mortar. I kept reading that you can buy this pre-mixed, but I think that's only overseas. I think that's a European thing. I could not find any in our area that was pre-mixed of the lime mortar, so we did it ourselves. Um, wear a mask and wear gloves. The lime is pretty rough on you, and so you wanna be careful with that. We're all mixed up. What we're going to do is put some in a five gallon bucket. Um, we've got our drill attachment mixer and we're just gonna add little bits of water at a time. Uh, every video that I watched where they were doing this, it was very small amounts of water and a lot of mixing. Okay, we have our hose down here. We have a water source, so we're gonna go ahead and spray all this down. And then I brought in my mixture and we're going to get this mixed up while the water soaks into the wall a bit and then we should be ready to go. I'm going to quickly run through this process. So we're going to scrape out all of the old mortar. We're going to give it a good wash. We're going to start to install the new mortar being careful to press it in deeply between the rocks and the last thing we're going to do is brush it nice and smooth. It makes a seal along those rocks and gives you the nice finish. We have to the dirt pouring out of there. Good, right? okay. At this point, I'm going to show you how we put new smaller rocks in anywhere we have a larger gap. A lot of these have fallen out or they just had a large piece of mortar that fell out. So what we're doing is we're making sure we put plenty of mortar behind the rocks. We don't have any air pockets or gaps back there. And fill in those really deep holes with as much mortar as necessary so that you can press those stones in. 
And we're going to go ahead and put a couple in some of these spots uh, because they're very large. This will help add some strength to the wall and prevent that mortar from cracking. All right, we've got this first part done. That was our first goal, probably about three feet wide and two feet down. What we're going to do now is come through with a brush um, and as it's drying a bit, brush and make sure that this fills in every little gap around the rocks so that it has a nice tight seal and then you can kind of wipe off areas of rock too if you want them cleaned up. Um, but we're going to just kind of pull this up against each rock. Seal it up and then get rid of excess at the same time. So right down here you can see it's not totally flush. I'll just brush that upwards and seal it up against that. And then you can kind of identify areas like this right here um, is going to need some fill and then this stripe up here as well. So I'll have to come back and get that. Overall we're just coming through smoothing everything out flush to the rocks. Now you could take a sponge um, with water on it and wash the face of the rocks if you don't want it on those edges um, like this one like it's pulled down quite a bit so you could wash this stuff off depending on what finish you want. The other part of this that is specific to the lime is that it needs to interact with the air, which is why you don't want to do it super thick. Um, the air is what actually solidifies it. What they recommend is keeping this humid or moist for the next couple of weeks. Um, there's special sheets you can get to kind of hold in the moisture. We're in a really damp barn, so I think that that is going to be enough, but I'm going to keep an eye on it. If it seems like it's drying out or looking like it's going to pull away or crack, you need to wet it down um, and adjust as needed. So it needs that moisture for a couple weeks and without freezing. That's why we're doing this uh, now as kind of a rush. But that is specific to the lime. I'm not sure if you're using concrete how that varies, um, but it takes a good long time for this to cure and we're going to be watching it really closely. So this is the start of a very long journey, and I hope you stick around uh, to see it through. I'm going to be working on this a lot over the next couple weeks and try to do an update before we're done for the fall. Otherwise, we'll be right back in the spring doing the same thing. So thank you for everybody who has subscribed, uh, helped support our channel and our family. We love you. We appreciate you, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye, guys.